maybe like 15. Yeah, maybe we'll let us join before we start. We're just, uh, how many? Seven. Seven of us. Okay. Pareta.
Good evening, good evening, professional colleagues. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening, yes. Okay. We'll start now. We'll start. Our colleagues will join us. We're about um, what, 12, 14. Okay, let's start. Our colleagues will join us. So um, I would like to welcome us all to um, today's um, presentation. We usually have, as we all know, every Friday. And then um, today's presentation is on um, drug therapy problems, um, identification and um, intervention, and of course, the role of pharmacists, of clinical pharmacists in um, drug therapy problems. We do know that um, drug therapy problems represent um, categorization and definition of clinical problems related to the use of medications in pharmaceutical care. Of course, we also know that there's a major cause of concern because it leads to you know, poor quality of life, poor um, clinical outcomes, as well as an increased health cost. So our presenter today is going to um, talk to us on what drug therapy problems are and our roles as pharmacists. And our presenter is pharmacist Bolanle Oreyemi Oshoba, who is an assistant director, pharmaceutical services, and head of the pharmacy department with the state specialist hospital, Ikere, Ekete State. And of course, my humble self, um, Dr. Trisha. Um, pharmacist Bolanle, please, um, the floor is yours. You can now um, start your presentation. Thank you very much. Please, can we all kindly mute our mics so that um, there are no background interferences? Thank you, as you can play. Thank you, Dr. Trish, for the introduction. Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome us all once again to tonight's presentation. Can you all hear me, please? We can, we can. Yes. All right, yes. that's good. Yes. Um, once again, we're welcome to tonight's presentation and um, the topic, as Dr. Tricia has rightly mentioned, is drug therapy problems. Um, it's um, identification and intervention, which are the rules of the clinical pharmacists. Can you see my slide, please? Can you see my slide? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Straight to the outline for tonight's presentation. We have the background. What are drug therapy problems? Categorization of DTPs, consequences of DTPs, toxicity, adverse drug reaction, medication error, identification of DTPs, drug interactions, pharmacovigilance, conclusion, and the resources. As a background, I would like to say, drugs are dualistic therapeutic tools. They are intended to cure, prevent, or diagnose diseases, signs, or symptoms. And its improper use can lead to patient morbidity and even mortality. The interest in adverse drug reactions, also known as side effects, became increased in the 60s after the Talidomide disaster, when, um, when pregnant women were giving, giving birth to deformed babies with either, neither legs nor, nor lean, upper limbs or lower limbs, and it became an issue. The Talidomide disaster was considered as a final trigger for the establishment of formal pro programs of drug approval and subsequent surveillance. In recent years, attention has shifted towards the problem of medication errors. Literature is now expanding rapidly for both adverse drug reactions and medication errors. In general, problems related to the use of approved drugs can be summarized with the term drug therapy problems or drug related problems. What is drug therapy problem? This is an any undesirable event experienced by a patient that involves 
or is suspected to involve drug therapy. This interferes with achieving the desired goals of therapy and requires a professional judgment to resolve. Would you agree with me that the essence of using any medication is for the patient to feel better? That is our therapeutic outcome. However, the use of drugs can also lead to other effects that are undesirable, that were not planned. And this will interfere with our desire, which is to achieve the therapeutic goal. Usually before you can identify these drug therapy problems, you need to be vast. You, have, you need to have a vast knowledge of these drugs, their possible interaction or side effects. And that is where the role of the pharmacist as a professional comes in. These are the categorization of drug therapy problems. You have untreated indication, drug use without indication, non-compliance, improper drug selection, which can be drug or age precaution, drug pregnancy alert, drug sex alert. Before I continue, you can have a situation whereby there's an indication that is the doctor has identified it, the, um, he has diagnosed a condition. However, in, in, its, um, in its prescription, you find out that there is no drug that is targeted at that indication. That is when a situation where you have untreated indication. In some other cases, you may also have the, the physician including a drug. And as a pharmacist, you are wondering why the physician has included that, um, that uh, medication in the patient's drugs. That is a clear sense of drug use without indication. You also have non-compliance. That is when your patient has been given prescription, but has refused to take his medication as, as prescribed. Many times the patient will not tell you that he has failed to comply, but what you just find out is that the you are not getting the therapeutic outcome that is desired. You also have improper drug selection. This often occurs when the physician has given a drug that is not fit for the patient. That's in the, that you have that when a drug that is not compliant with a particular age group has been chosen, for instance, you also have drug pregnancy alerts, that is a drug has been chosen for a pregnant woman, which is actually outrightly contraindicated in pregnancy. You also have drug sex alerts. Then sub-therapeutic dosage, where low dose has been indicated, has been prescribed for the patient, maybe under use, precaution, or insufficient duration. Sometimes you find a prescription and you are wondering why the, doc, the physician has decided to give the prescription for such a short period of time. We also have overdosage. In these situations, you have to watch out for high dose. You have to watch out for overuse. You have to watch out for excessive duration. You know, we mentioned short duration. We can also have excessive duration. You can have therapeutic duplication. You can have a, a, um, a physician prescribing drugs in the same category and drug in different categories to treat the same condition. For instance, I've seen prescriptions where you have cimetidine and um, omeprazole indicated for, prescribed for the same patients. And you are wondering why. You also have ingredient duplication you have additive toxicity that you have to watch out for. Also, we have adverse drug reactions as a side effect. If there has been a, a, a prior adverse reaction or drug allergy, we have we see this in um, conditions of our um, penicillins. They are the, they have the greatest indication for these um, 
um, adverse reaction, which can be de uh, deadly, as seen in the case of um, Stephen Johnson syndrome. Then you have drug interaction, where one drug is interacting with another. We have to be cautious. We, have to, we also have to be cautious with drug food interaction. We have to be conscious of drug incompatibilities and also drug laboratory conflicts. Consequences of drug therapy problems. If drug therapy problems go unresolved, it has numerous clinical consequences. It is therefore imperative that a professional like a clinical pharmacist is required to clearly define or identify these ther drug therapy problems so that they can be resolved and um, the, the patient can get the optimum benefits from the medication. DTPs can be divided into intrinsic and extrinsic toxicity. In, in the case of intrinsic toxicity, you have interaction of the pharmaceutical, chemical, and or pharmacological characteristics of the drug itself and the human biosystem. Intrinsic toxicity is therefore synonymous with adverse drug reactions. What this simply implies is that the drug, the toxicity is as a result of an interaction of that drug with the human, with the person the human body taking that drug. An ADR is defined by the WHO as any response to a drug that is nauseous and unintended and which occurs at doses normally used in man for prophylaxis, diagnosis or therapy of disease or for the modification of psychophysiological function. Simply put, this drug is used by um, everybody. It is the dose that was used is the re recommended dosage. However, in a few set of people, you just find out that they don't do well. They don't tolerate that drug. We have divided uh, ADRs into the type one, I mean type A and the type P interactions. Type A in reactions are pharmacological effects as much as therapeutic actions are. The essential difference being that they are unintended. In type A, the effects are by far most prevalent. As a rule, there is a dose response reaction I mean relationship. Therefore, type A ADRs are more frequent and more severe when higher doses are taken. Examples are seen in constipation during the use of morphine, and peptic ulcer induced by NSAIDs. However, in type B reactions, you find that the medicine is mostly toler well tolerated by a vast majority of users, but elicit an endosynchiatric reaction in predisposed patients. Type B effects are often unexpected. They are rare and they are severe. Type B reactions have historically been the major reason for withdrawal of medicines from the market. Characteristically, there is no dose relationship with type B reactions. Type B effects are either immunological or non-immunological forms of hypersensitivity and occurs in patients with a predisposing condition, which is often unknown or unrecognized. What it simply means is that in that, in that few category of patients that are likely to react to these drugs, there's an idiosyncrasy in them. We don't know, we can't see it. Some tests may help us know it. We, know we, are, we, just, we used to talk about this in cytochrome 3450 and other anomaly in cytochromes. But they are not what you visibly say, oh, this person will react to this drug or this other person. You can't say for sure. However, a few people will just not do, will just react to a particular drug. 
And um, we have the examples being Stephen Johnson's syndrome and anaphylactic shock. They come, they don't say with the guest name, yeah. No, I say, no, I say. Yes, and exclusion of the way refers to the problems caused by the handling of the drug, either by the healthcare professional or by the patient. This we find this happening maybe due to storage or handling on when you put leave the drugs out in um, in conditions that are not favorable for that kind of drug. Some drugs are light sensitive. If they are not properly stored, you have that problem with them. We have some drugs also require certain temperature such that you need to refrigerate them to keep them within the temperature range that is um, for, under which they remain active and potent for the duration for their shelf life, for the duration of their shelf life. When the drug is not used in the proper way, a medication error has occurred. A medication error is defined as any preventable event that may cause or lead to inappropriate medication use or patient arm while medication is in the control of the healthcare professional, patient, or consumer. Therefore, medication errors do not necessarily need to result in harm to the patient. In comparison of ADRs and medication errors, ADRs always involve some form of harm. However, medication error may not cause any harm. This um, chart shows the National Coordinating Council for Medication Error Reporting and Prevention Index for categorization of medication errors. And we find the different categorization, the green one being that an error has occurred and there is no, excuse me, there is no, um, there's no death. No, no, category A shows that there has been an error, but there was no effect, no untowards effect due to the error. And it goes like that with the gravity or the consequences increasing as it goes up onto the green zone where it becomes a deadly um, medication error. Medication errors can occur in the following ways. We have them as prescribing errors, as category one, administrative and procedural errors, the patient data, e.g. patient looks up. These are caused when maybe a patient, the, the prescription is meant for a patient but was wrongly added over to another patient. You have what data, prescribed data, when there is a mix up, generally when the drug name is mixed up, when the dosage form and the route of administration is also mixed up, these ones are categorized as administrative and procedural errors. We also have dosage errors where you have maybe the wrong strength is indicated, the frequency is wrong, the dose is too high or too low, the length of therapy is too short or too long, and or if the directions for use are not clear or correct. We have therapeutic errors as an indication, the wrong drug given for the wrong indication, or contraindication, we have drug drug interaction, incorrect monotherapy, duplicate therapy, where two brands of the same medication are given. For instance, I've seen prescriptions where you have, you may have a brand name and another generic name written in you were written on the same prescription and expected to be given to the same um, patients. You also have pseudo duplicate therapy, that is the use of two different drugs, similar to what I just mentioned, two different drugs um, in the same um, therapeutic category. We also have the dispensing errors, and this one has to do more with his and uh, with. Pharmacists, we have to be careful not to give the wrong patients our drugs, not to send our drugs to the wrong ward or the wrong drug to the, wrong, to the right patient, wrong dosage form, wrong strength, or admin or um, counseling the patient to use at the wrong time. 
We also have administration errors where there is omission of drugs, where drugs are unordered and are used, or the wrong dosage forms are, are given, or given through the wrong rules of administration, wrong administration technique, wrong dosage, wrong time, exceeding two hours early or late, compliance or adherence errors. That of wrong time is more likely to occur, not like it doesn't occur in out, with outpatients, but I've seen it happen more in um, with inpatients when nurses give medications at the same time, not considering whether the drug is indicated to be used maybe two hours after other medication or for convenience so that the nurse would not have to do it around again. She just gives all the medications at once. Yes. So identifying drug therapy problems. This is a clinical judgment that requires the identification of the association between the patient's medical condition and the patient's pharmacotherapy. You want to know that, you want to be able to detect that the, the, um, the effects, the, uh, the condition, the medical condition, maybe in case of headache or any other effects, any other side effects or any other effects that you are seen in that patient, it's due to the drug that the patient had previously used. Identifying DTP is a clinical skill which requires knowledge of cl drug classes as well as their mechanism of action. And that is why a pharmacist cannot claim ignorance of um, drug therapy problems identification. We are the most equipped to be able to identify drug therapy problems because of our knowledge of pharmacology pharmacokinetics and um, pharmacodynamics. This is the core competence area of a pharmacist. The knowledge of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics equips the pharmacist to suspect or detect a possible drug interaction, ADR or medication error. A correctly stated drug therapy problem includes a description of the patient's condition or problem, drug therapy involved and the specific association between the drug therapy and the patient's condition. So, so why should we detect or identify drug therapy problems? The purpose of identifying drug therapy problems is to help patients achieve the, achieve the goals of therapy and realize the best possible therapeutic outcomes from drug therapy. We want to be able to give the patient the best of what the patient has come to the hospital for. We don't want a situation whereby the patient comes to the hospital to complain of headache and is going home with stomach ache because we have given some medications that have probably interacted with the person's biosystem or other drugs that the patient has used in the course of the person's either stay in the hospital or if the person is an outpatient used with other medication. Drug therapy problems are a consequence of the patient's drug-related needs that has gone unmet. They are central to pharmaceutical care practice. That is it. Pharmaceutical care revolves around the identification of drug therapy problems. Drug interactions. We have this, a chart showing the various drug interactions that are possible. We have the drug, 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 food, drugs, supplements, and drug medical condition interactions, which are with possible effects are either decreased action of the drugs, increased action of the drugs, or adverse effects. A drug interaction is the reaction between two or more drugs or between a drug and a food, beverage, supplement, or other remedy. Taking a drug while having medical conditions can also cause a drug interaction, as is the case with renal and liver disease. Drug interactions are changes in drug effects due to recent or concurrent use of another drug or drugs, food, supplements, or other remedies. Drug interactions may lead to an increase or a decrease in the beneficial or adverse effects of the drugs given. That brings us to pharmacovigilance. As pharmacists, we should watch out for 
the effects of drugs, the effect, the unexpected effects that may come as a result of the medication that has been prescribed our use. Pharmacovigilance, according to WHO, pharmacovigilance is the science and activities relating to the detection, assessment, understanding and prevention of adverse drug therapy or any other drug related problem. So the whole essence of pharmacovigilance is that now that if we can identify it, we want to curb it, we want to stop it. We don't want it to continue. If it has happened in one patient, we want it to end there. We don't want it to become a recurrent occurrence in other patients. Pharmacovigilance is also known as drug safety. Summary, drug safety. And is the pharmaceutical science relating to the collection, detection, assessment, monitoring, and prevention of adverse effects with pharmaceutical products. All medicines and vaccines undergo rigorous testing for safety and efficacy through clinical trials before they are released into the market. Post-marketing surveillance continues after the release of a product to the market. It is a practice of monitoring the safety of a drug or device that is already in the market. Pharmacovigilance simply means shine your eyes when it has to do with drugs. And the, only, the essence is to improve patient care and safety, to contribute to the assessment of benefit, harm, or effectiveness of medicine, to identify previously unrecognized address events, to promote rational and safe use of medicines, to promote education and clinical training, to identify patients related risk factors of ADRs, such as dose, age, and gender, and any response to a drug which is unintended that occurs at particular doses. You know, we also want to take note of such so that um, we are careful when giving the drug in those, in those doses. Then it's also to diagnose or the therapy of disease for modification of physiological function. Pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance is a responsibility shared by manufacturers, drug regulators, public health programs, clinical institutions, academic researchers, healthcare workers, the media and consumers alike. The role of the pharmacist has moved from traditionally dispensing medicine to acting as a consultant on pharmacotherapy both for physicians and patients. Underpinning all of these rules is the safe use of medicine. According to literature, ADRs account for a huge percentage of hospital admissions from 3.2% in France, percent in France, 6.7% in the US, 12% in Sweden, and 65 in the UK. Hospital pharmacists play an important role in prevention and recording of ADRs. This would, however, require direct involvement in patient care. And that is where pharmacists come in. If we are already, if we have not started doing this, it is time for us to take up this responsibility as our pharmaceutical care services. It is our role to, de to, de um, to detect, to identify, detect, and call the attention of physicians to these possible problems that can lead to extended stay of our patients on the wards. The yes, objective of pharmacovigilance I've mentioned them before to support regulatory agencies, to monitor risk benefit profile of medicines, to create awareness among healthcare professionals about ADRs and to monitor ADRs. In conclusion, the provision of drug information has been shown to be a powerful incentive to supporting pharmacovigilance surveillance systems. Apart from tracing and weighing risk factors, pharmacovigilance tries to advise doctors and pharmacists on how best to deal with these risks and provide them with tools that will enable them to provide alternatives with less untoward 
effects and individualize patient pharmacotherapy. That's the whole essence of DTPM identification of these drug therapy problems, meaning that we may need to start individualizing therapy for our patients. What is suitable for patient A may not be suitable for patient B. And we have to start looking in that direction so that our patients get the best of pharmacotherapy, their pharmacotherapy. This approach permits pharmacovigilance to contribute to a safe and rational use of drugs for the benefit and well-being of patients that are dependent on drugs. Automating the ADR reporting process might go a long way to increasing reports from pharmacists in the hospital settings. Yes, um, most times we identify some of these adverse drug reactions, we see some medication errors, we see some prescribing errors, but mostly pharmacists are not in the habit of documenting their activities. And as we rightly say, what is not documented is not done. Until we start to document these things, until we start to see and allow all the members of the healthcare team know that our presence and intervention have saved, will save and will continue to save people from unnecessary extended hospital stay, ex unnecessary expense, and other unwanted um, effects from drugs, we may still continue to have that battle between the battle of explaining or defining our relevance in the hospital setting. It is evident that the pharmacist needs to be given an important role in the further development of pharmacovigilance. It is also essential that the pharmacist as an expert on medication and as an ADR reporter entrenches this role and considers it an integral part of the services that is pharmaceutical care. After all, pharmacy is synonymous to drugs and drugs synonymous to pharma pharmacy. At this point, I'd like to encourage us as pharmacists that we need to do more when it comes to observing um, the, the therapy of our patients, we may have to ask our patients how they are doing, if they are taking their medications, why they are not taking it. Counseling has gone beyond um, telling our patients to take their medication one, two times daily or one, three times daily. We really want to know if the patient is been having maximum benefits from the prescription is being on for a while. We also want to know if the patient has been complying and if the patient has concerns or reasons why he has not been complying. As pharmacists, we should be able to help the patient identify these problems, the reason for these problems and help resolve these problems. At this juncture, I'd like to say thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Pharmacy Volanle Oreyemi Oshaba. Thank you so much for this and very detailed presentation on identification and intervention of drug therapy problems, which all pharmacists we do know, you know, is um, the bedrock of um, pharmaceutical care. And um, before we go into um, the questions, observations, comments, and answers. I would like to very briefly um, acknowledge the presence of um, Sipan's um, secretary, uh, General Secretary, Dr. Moti Hat Olu Lawal, Dr. Joseph Ole, Dr. Maureen Wafo, who is the vice chairman of Sipan, um, our own Dr. Ibrahim Bello, um, Dr. Timi Agogo. I'd like to thank all of you for coming and especially our other colleagues from the different parts of the nation. It's not just them, um, River State. I know that other colleagues from other states are participating in this um, presentation. We'd like to thank you so much for your time. So um, I'm going to um, allow 10, 10 questions, comments, and um, observations. So kindly um, raise your um, hand and I'll identify and you can go on and then um, um, respond. 
Thank you. Are there questions, comments? Hello, am I being heard? Hello. Yes, you have. Okay, I wasn't sure. I wasn't heard. I wasn't sure. Okay. Are there any questions, comments? Okay. Um, Maureen, um, Dr. Maureen Wafo, please, um, the floor is yours. You can go ahead. I can see your hand is raised. Thank you. Dr. Maureen Wafo, you can go ahead, please. Unmute yourself, please. Hello. Dr. Maureen Wafo, you can unmute yourself and then um, ask your question, please, or your comment, as the case may be. Oh, okay. you need to okay. unmute her. Sorry. Okay. Can I you unmute her from your end? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just trying to um, okay. where she is. Okay, I'm on now. Okay, yeah, okay. Okay. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. You can go on, please. Okay. Once again, I want to start by thanking our able presenter of tonight's presentation. She gave us a detailed presentation concerning yes. drug therapy yes. problems. Yes. Quite refreshing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, for now, I've not seen our able chairman, Dr. Joseph Madu. I want to start by appreciating him. And on behalf of uh, our able chairman, I want to welcome all of us to tonight's clinical meeting. Hopefully that he may join us before we close. I uh, just have a few comments to make. Why we be hearing about drug therapy problems? Actually, it is our, our duty as a clinical pharmacist to review our patients' prescriptions and thereafter identify, resolve, or prevent drug therapy problems. Fine, we've done that. So my question is now, how are we going to go about documentation? Because after all the, the uh, identification, resolving and all whatnot, okay. if we didn't document, we it's still this. as if we did nothing. No, 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 eat your food. Okay, so, uh, hello. Uh -oh. I'm doing something here. So I'm still asking, I'm still asking in respect of uh, documentation. So I want to, the, presenter to give us a case in study of what's happening in our own center. How do you go about documenting drug therapy problems? Do we do you document inside the patient's folder or just in the other pharmacy? How do you communicate with the prescribers? Because after identifying, if you have that communication with the prescribers, you don't know whether the your DTP identifies we are accepted or rejected. Even if in case it was rejected, you should be able to know the reason why it was uh, rejected for proper documentation and for sure, you know, use, you know. So that's my question. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Yeah, can we take all the questions? From Mrs. Bolali, do you mind? Can we take all the questions and then you answer them accordingly? Thank you. Is there any other question? Someone was raising his hand. Um, Ulusheu Togumu. Hello? Okay, please, could you go ahead, Pharmacist Bonani? 
Yeah, hello. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Please, could you, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Fawaz Edidi Onwarok, and uh, I want to thank the presenter for her presentation. It was well detailed. Yes. Yeah, my question is um, quite close to what the 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 other pharmacists mentioned about um, documentation. And I think um, probably uh, one of the questions is uh, what kind of um, classification of DTPs did you use? Because I know there are a lot of um, different ways of classifying DTPs. Uh, because I think the current acceptable way of classifying DTPs, there is provision for um, intervention by the pharmacist, uh, where you have to, you can document intervention. And then there's also a provision for if your, if your recommendation is, uh, is going to be accepted by the physician or if it, is, if it was rejected by the physician, what was the fate of whatever intervention you are providing? Because there are instances where you can provide an intervention, but uh, your intervention is not accepted by the physician or your intervention is now modified by the physician before accepting or something like that. So I wanted you to throw more light on the kind of um, classification you used for the DTPs. Thank you. Okay, the, um, thank you so much for that. Um, Olusheu Togomi, I think he has been raising his hand. He should go on. I've unmuted everyone so you can... Yeah, right uh, you can um, ask your question. I guess he's not ready. There was a second person, Risikat Lawal, who had uh, raised um, his or her hand. <laughs> Hello, um, from, um, from Bolani, please could you um, kindly respond to the two questions for now? I guess the other two um, participants are not ready yet because I've muted everyone. So they should be able to unmute themselves. Thank okay. you very much. Mm, thank you. Thank you, from, from Mr. Patricia, Dr. Patricia. Yes, um, document, for documentation. Right now, I think, Okay, I'll say what is obtainable at my center, and then I would say what I think should be, we should look into doing. Right now, because there is no, um, there's no protocol for rates yet. What we do is, I have um, advised that we get, we have a book for rates, drug therapy problems. So the, the pharmacist will document name of the patient, um, name, age, and other um, demographics of the patient, and then identify what the drug therapy problem is. You also um, document what your recommendation was. Did you, or what your intervention was? Did you approach the physician? Did the physician accept your recommendation? Sometimes, and that's one thing I have told my colleagues at my center, sometimes our, our intervention calls the, calls the attention of the physician to that concern. He may be aware, he may not be aware. We also have a situation where the doctor may have the physician may have at the back of his mind that drug therapy problem, but will also consider the risk benefit ratio of that medication and may insist on it. Sometimes it may be ego, but whatever it is, as a pharmacist that must act majorly based on the prescriber's prescription and um, desires, 
your own role as a pharmacist is to document your suggestion. Also document whether it was accepted or not, why it was not accepted, and um, then sign and put down your date. For now, not much is being done with this documentation. But the good thing about documentation is that it can always be referred to in the future for whatever reason. As a pharmacist, I know many of our centers are lacking um, enough manpower in terms of um, pharmacists to be able to follow up on patients. But if, especially if um, the physician has thrown out your concern or your call for um, intervention, intervening in that um, drug therapy problem, especially if you think it's out of it, I think it would be a good thing to follow up on that patient and see if or how the patient fed after um, taking the medication as insisted upon by the physician. So now, hello? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, hear so you. that's my take on that. That is what is the present. But as we are evolving as clinical pharmacists, I think we should have a protocol that will be general for all so that these things can be uh, documented in similar similar manner and um, and uh, um, maybe at some other forum we may want to discuss some of these drug therapy problems that we have identified in the course or maybe in a quarterly maybe monthly depending on how busy the center is and maybe in a monthly um, quarterly and at other intervals if we have this kind of discussions with physicians, I believe some of them may be egocentric, but a few of them actually are realistic and will see reasons. So that way, our roles as pharmacists, as clinical pharmacists, as um, professionals that are interested in um, the overall well being of the patient and preventing drug therapy problems will, will be identified. And one thing that I usually say is that some of your efforts may not yield immediate results, but keep at it because one day, someone somewhere where it matters may just listen and then get the result for all of your hard work that has gone unnoticed. So for the second question, yes, I think I've asked if um, the intervention was not taken, what do you do? I said that um, we document at some clinical meetings. We want to raise this. If you have followed up on the on the patients, you also want to see what you have observed about the patients. But one thing is that we have to have facts and not base our our judgment or our um, whatever is our judgment on um, rumors or subjective um, subjective reasoning that cannot be backed up with facts. We may want to use um, laboratory results or any other thing that can be documented for these concerns. I also said something about how so much we have idea. Um, in an ideal situation, I would expect that if it is um, fully Automate, I mean, automated computerized system that the hospital is using. The um, software can also help us document these drug therapy problems and have it signed off in the name of the pharmacy that has intervened. And at um, similar forums where, where I've mentioned earlier, these things may be discussed and, um, and um, as, as a medical team, we can see reasons on how to go forward with um, this our uh, solution. Yes, the um, first that, um, that second question also asks about the classification years. When I started the presentation, I categorized drug therapy problems, drug therapy problems into these categories. And that's, that's, that's the one I'm most familiar with. I don't know if he has any other one that he wants to share with us. So. Thank you. 
thank you, pharmacist Bonami. Before I allow um, pharmacist uh, Dr. Nambi Wanko to speak, I'd like to acknowledge um, the presence of Dr. Regina James, Dr. Ejiro Akpowo, and Dr. Peter Afonso. Thank you so much for joining this presentation. Um, Dr. Nambi Wanko, I believe it's Dr. CNN, I believe so, I'm not too sure. Your, your, the, the floor is, um, you have the floor please. You can uh, respond if you so desire. You can unmute yourself. I've actually unmuted everyone, so you can unmute yourself and speak. Olu, Olu, Muywa, Ogunolu. Hello. Yes. Thank you. We can hear you. Okay. Um, my the question I was to ask was I just been taking care of it. So as with respect to um I wanted to know if there's any protocol as in procedure of documenting and transmitting um any drug therapy problem. Notice that you identify your center and your area of practice, your place of practice. It has been taken care of. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I may be wrong, but um, I believe um, Sipan has uh, has our own um, documentation um, sheet where you have your interventions and responses and all that. I may be wrong, but um, the secretary to Sipan is actually on, so she may be able to throw more light on that. I do know that um, Sipan um, circulated um, our own uh, intervention form, as it were, you know, that uh, we can, inter you know, document all our interventions on drug therapy problems, you know, and then go from there. But um, I don't know, I think she's on, she's online. So if she is, if she actually had me, I don't know if she could respond. Dr. Buki. She's not responding. Okay. Okay. Are there any more um, comments, questions, clarifications? Okay. We have. Um, okay. Please unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. Uh, we see Kat Lawal. Oh. And then, um, yeah, please go ahead. Mr. Kadla, well, please. The floor is yours. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we okay. can. Okay, good, good evening. Good evening. Oh, mine is just a comment. I just want to appreciate our lecturer and uh, the organizers for the good program. Thank you very much. Thank you, too. Thank you, too. Thank you. Are there more comments? Thank you so much. Are there more comments, Thank questions? You. Please go ahead. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'm sorry I joined late. I didn't oh, really <laughs> get to enjoy the presentation as such. However, I'd like to comment on the second question, which the presenter also have um, spoken on. Okay. Um, I would like to state that um, what you do with regards to your therapy problem identified or your intervention is a function of the nature of the therapy problem you identified and the severity. <clears throat> I give you an instance. And while... Um, transmitting your intervention or discussing your intervention is usually very more productive when you carry the other members of the team along, especially the Hello. Oh, we've lost him there. For cellulitis, the wound is still, the, the finger is still 
postulating, the temperature is still spiking, and the patient has been on rosefin one, one gram BD for six days. On the sixth day, I come around with my intern rounding on the patient. I requested for the labs. There was no labs in the folder. And then the physician is just there writing continue current management, continue current management. And then I go to the lab, the um, hospital lab with the patient name to see what the culture resort actually says. Find seeing the labs, uh, was actually the ceftriaxone was actually resistant. The organism was resistant to ceftriaxone, but sensitive to ciprofloxacin, which was much cheaper. Now, right in the presence of the nurse, I called the consultant, discussed the case, and the consultant in the usual arrogance, screaming that um, why should I go and pick up the patient labs? And I told the uh, consultant. I never picked up the patient lab. I went there to cite the lab and I have every right to do that. If you are talking about picking up the, the, the result from the lab, it is the person who requested for that can sign for it. So when you come, you can go check mm -hmm. who signed for the, the, the lab, the results. But the issue on ground is this patient is not improving on the current medication. And right there and then the nurse stated that she's not going to give that rosefin again until it is changed to this uh, ciprofloxacin. Mm. Much a few hours later after we left, he calls his registrar to go back there to change the prescription. I come back the next day, it's been changed. So my point being that if the nurse is not carried along, explaining to the nurse what you have identified and what the issue is, you will actually achieve nothing. Because the minute you leave, the nurse will continue with the same prescription True. as has been dispensed. Mm -hmm. Again, when I said it's a function of um, the nature and severity of the therapy problem, <clears throat> sometimes a situation where because you are the drug expert, you know what level of harm this medication can cause. So if you see a medication that will cause severe harm, you don't even dispense. In my center, we don't dispense until that issue is resolved. We've had a, I've had a patient like that for two days. The registrar refused to call the consultant and we did not dispense. And by the time the consultant came in, we had to look at it together. So. Depend on the severity. If you know the patient will experience harm based on the dose and the medication being given, you do not dispense. We cascade, uh, cascade it upwards. If it involves bringing management into the scenario, it has to be done because ultimately it's for the benefit of the patient. The patient yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Ejiro. Thank you for that comment. Thank you so much. Um, uh, the Opone Ifi, please could um, could you um, ask your question or your comment? You want to do that? Let's go ahead. Please kindly unmute yourself and then speak, please. Regina James, do you have a comment or question? From Mrs. Regina James. Hello. 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 Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, I I I must commend um, everyone here. I joined in late. Thank you so much, Ma, for the wonderful presentation. Um, I came in late, like I said, but uh, my own contribution, or um, would I call it a question now, is in cases where the patient's, the patient's medication is actually dictated to cause harm, 
you know, and then the consultant or the reg in charge of the patient is adamant, so wanting to change in the prescription. And we know that this patient needs a, a probably same class or a class of that medication. So I don't know how we can actually man or manage this situation because we have cases where maybe not an on Hello, Famifi. I barely heard you to the very end. I don't know if it's my network or Hello. yours. Hello. No, it's the network is funny. It's not just it's not just here. Okay. The network, yes, it's um, but the part it's I heard. Thing. The part I heard, I think, um, Doctor, um, Doctor CNN Hall, I think, had um, touched it. Where it talks about cascading it upwards, especially if it has, um, if it has, you know, very um, revealed consequences on the patient. The whole essence of everything is for the patient's greater good. So, if you are confident, that's one other thing I may I usually tell people is that you need to really know so that you won't be fighting a lost cause. So you really, really to re, you need to really know when you are convinced, you may need to cascade it upwards. I believe, and of course, before you do that, you may want the physician to know that you'll be doing that so that you would give it some a second thought and will not, you will not be having um, a friction with your other team members because we are certainly going to encounter this um, physician again on another patient. So we have to be um, careful how we interact with them. So, but basically, I think we are coming in slowly, gradually, and um, eventually at some point, the physicians will have to listen to us again. When I started working. I had situations where the physician will write the drug and expect pharmacy to put in the dosage because they'll tell us, hey, pharmacy, did that drug, uh, the dosage, that's your problem, go and fill it in because they had so much confidence in the pharmacist. I don't know what happened along the line. Some of them will even come to pharmacy to come and ask, and um, what's the name of this medication again? This class, I want to use this drug for the patient. They used to have so much confidence in the pharmacist. But somewhere along the line, I don't know how we lost that confidence and um, even interaction with physicians that now it's almost as if it's a battle between the pharmacists and the physicians in the hospitals. We need to go back to that time and it will make it better because we are better informed now, we are more equipped. And of course, we have all the resources at our disposal to be able to do better than we did in those days. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, time has, uh, has, time is, um, is not on our side now. We've spent over an hour. So um, in the absence of any other comments, questions, 
contribution, I would like to um, end this um, wonderful presentation by calling Dr. Timmy Agogo to end this Adam. meeting with a prayer. Hello. Yes. Oh, yes, wow. sorry. I've been oh, raising up my hands. I don't know Anna, what happened. And I've also been, Albert, I called you once or twice to. Wow, well, I didn't. Go ahead. I, I didn't. Uh, okay, so I'm so, so uh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, okay, sorry. Thank you, back. Well. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. okay. so please go. Yeah, ahead. My, my, my name is uh, Muiwa. Muiwa, thank yes, you. I called you. Uh, once. I want to appreciate the presenter uh, for that okay. job. Well done. Uh, my question uh, and contribution is in the area of uh, pharmacovigilance. Okay. Because that's one area I've really found that I don't know, maybe in my own area, that has not been well developed within the within our clinical setting. I may be wrong anyway. No, uh, why no, I'm no. saying this is that Sipan, no. and I would not like to share your experience in terms of your pharmac pharmacovigilance in your, in your center. And I will also want to call on Sipan. Where we need to make an impact is that uh, recently, uh, for people that are in usage, you may not know, because most of these things, if we don't go to the, to the world to really know the diagnosis and really look into what has been done by the doctor, we may not catch some. Um, I stumbled on, on somebody who has a myocarditis uh, as a result of, of uh, fascination. fascination. That's, uh, that's um, this uh, um, um, COVID fascination. Uh, just okay. about two weeks ago. Wow. And then, if we are not careful, the post-marketing survey, and that's where mm -hmm. I think can really come in with mm -hmm. our members that are in most of these hospitals or teaching hospitals. We can mm -hmm. produce a document. We can come up with something. Like this one was queried, um, uh, um, um, myocarditis post-COVID fascination, and that's post-marketing wow. environment. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. the area I wanted to touch on and to mm -hmm. see how CPAN we can compile something and come up with something and present it even to the National Pharmacovigilance Pharma Center. So that's the area I just want to, to, to bring in my own point and then hear from you. Thank you very much for giving me the audience. Thank you, too. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You want to respond? Okay, that was just an observation. Yes, okay. it was a comment. comment, yes. Okay, comment. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to reach back to the CIPAN and crew if they could um, kindly share the slides on the um, platforms. They, they would decide, not me. So in the absence of any further comments, please, um, Dr. Timi Aro, could you kindly um, end this meeting with a prayer, please? Yeah. Um, thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. Just before I pray, I just noticed that in this same pharmacovigilance, we didn't talk about um, NASDAQ yellow form. I know we use it a lot in my in my facility, especially concerning mm -hmm. adverse drug reactions. Here we get to feel it, and from time to time, that comes in and come and you know collect it. And so we can also use that with what um, Dr. Ogunola just just said. We can also accumulate mm -hmm. those those forms. before we submit. We can just make make a copy in the in the in the pharmacy, document it, and then we can use from there. To do whatever study that you are actually talking about. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. So please let's thank pray. You. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for making it possible for us to gather here this evening. Thank you for making it possible for us to actually learn today. It's a busy day. Many people are very busy, but you have actually made it possible today. Father, we thank you. It gives us more strength so that we do not forget this uh, you know, meeting, so that we continue to hold it every Friday. Um, some of us are, yeah, we are now going back to that. Please, I'll beg you to please protect us and we all to guide us. Thank you for everything that you have been doing for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, Pharmacist Bonlane, God bless you. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much. much Thank you so much. We're grateful. Well, everyone, Thank have you. a good night's rest and happy Easter. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Good night. Good Thank, night. You. Thank you. Very so much. The, 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 Thank this you. slide, uh, we hope it will come on very soon. Thank yes, you the CPAN Yes, they're going to handle that. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. We appreciate it. We're so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.